Thanks. Oh, huh? Son, you looking at her straight up, bona fide, back in the hills, root worker right here. Let's face it, we all have hoodoo in our blood. In fact, if it wasn't for the hoodoo practitioners in the Deep South, our ancestors probably wouldn't have survived slavery. Now, would the Hollywood gods ever put that kind of information in the movie? Not sure. Besides, they seem to love defaming African gods and hoodoo practices in horror. There was a skeleton key where Violet Platt to steal Caroline's soul. Let's not forget about True Blood, where Tarot gets an exorcism by a voodoo practitioner, only later for the viewers to find out that she was a charlatan. And lastly, there was a movie spell that works in the same horror genre, but is scary for all the right reasons. The first one being the boogity doll, and the second one being Miss Eloise's unconventional healing modalities. So in this video, we're going to talk about hoodoo healing spells, how hoodoo practitioners are portrayed in movies and in media, and how you, my friends, can tap into some of this hoodoo power. So stay tuned for that. Now first there is Tara from True Blood and she was mean, couldn't keep a job and she pushed anyone away who showed her any type of love or affection. Of course, we as the viewers, we begin to empathize with Tara, especially when we learn that her mother was a fall down drunk. Now Tara, even though she was emotionally and physically abused by her mother, she seemed to hold on to some type of trauma bond where she was going to help her mother overcome her alcohol addiction. I need $445. No way, mama, we are broke. I needed to exercise the demon that is living inside of me. This, of course, led Tara to pay a lot of money for a hoodoo ritual that exercised this demon out of Letty Mae. But Letty Mae only exchanges one addiction for another. And instead of being a fall down drunk, she becomes a Bible thumping zealot. And to top everything off, she's still a shitty mother. Then there is the skeleton key, where Mama Cecile and Papa justified or hanged for presumably involving white children in one of their hoodoo rituals. They appear to be ghosts haunting the old dilapidated mansion in the heart of Louisiana. Caroline, a kind-hearted nurse, becomes Ben's caretaker. Over time, she grows suspicious of Ben's sudden unexplained illness that turned him into an invalid. She begins to dig digging up information about the old hoodoo voodoo South and she learns about these mystical hoodoo rituals and spells. Only to find out that Violet wasn't the sweet old lady that she appeared to be. Rather, she was Mama Cecile, looking to swap souls with Caroline and incapacitate her body like she did Ben's. Now, I have to admit, that was a twist that I never saw coming. Lastly, there was a movie Spell, where Omar Hardwick plays Marcus, a power-hungry, money-grabbing attorney who was a father of two and a husband of one. He seems to be embarrassed by his humble beginnings, and the flashbacks of his hoodoo lessons were more terrifying than all the other scenes in the movie. Yet the past rears his ugly head. Marcus' father dies, and the family is forced to fly down to the dirty south to honor his glory days. But then a storm erupts, sweeping them into a tailspin, where Marcus is injured and befuddled and concerned about his missing family. An elderly woman ensures him that she can use her hoodoo potions and spells to nurse him back to health. Yet Marquis is doubtful because he no longer believes in the power of woodwork and magic. So what do all these movies have in common, aside from the fact that they take place in a dirty south? Well, they all deal with hoodoo, that's a given. But these movies are all dirty. What do I mean by dirty? Well, it means that many of the practitioners in these movies were working with dirty, dark, or evil kinds of magic that in turn made them go crazy. Remember, I said in the beginning of this video that hoodoo practitioners were the quote unquote witch doctors who helped slaves survive in the dirty south and throughout the diaspora. So how did hoodoo workers go from herbal root workers and healers to evil, mean, wicked hags? Well, the answer to that question is simple. The magic was simply spiked. What do I mean by spiked? I mean the magic was cut with a whole bunch of other shit that weakened its potency and had an adverse effect on the body, mind, and soul. Let's use cocaine and heroin, for example. We all know that heroin comes from a poppy seed, and that seed, when ingested with the entire plant, isn't as addicting or toxic for that matter. 
However, when you remove all the elements, the morphine becomes very concentrated. And we all know that morphine and cocaine is one hell of a drug. Couple that with cutting it, mixing it with sugar, starch, powdered milk, and other types of poisonous substances. And voila, you got one hell of a mutation. And that's what baneful magic is. It's a mutation. So we all understand that hoodoo is a mixed bag of ancient indigenous beliefs and religions, folklore, many of which come from the western part of Africa. However, what we don't know is that much of the magic has been spiked, contaminated, so to speak, like morphine and cocaine has been cut, diluted with oppression, racism, and slavery. So the spirits that our ancestors called upon back in the day are no longer the spirits that we work with now. Many of them are haggard, beat up, maimed, and struggling to survive within a world that simply condemns them. And many people, despite all this, use these spirits, and in some strange way, they get results. After all, Miss Eloise cut out animal tongues, engaged her eyes out, in a weird attempt to heal the human body. Mama Cecile learned how to retaliate against oppression by swapping souls. And Miss Jeanette learned that she could heal people just using the power of belief. So these spirits and these gods are very sinister because they are very addictive by their very nature. Their practitioners get used to the money, they get used to the power, they get used to the fame and recognition. And thus, like an addiction, they can't stop working with these spirits, even if they wanted to. Miss Eloise really believed that she was helping people. And guess what, guys? In her own weird way, she really was. Her sciences, as backward and twisted as they were, gave people eyes and even legs. Mama Cecile figured out a way to live on forever, while Miss Jeanette cured Lady Mare for alcoholic addictions. But all of these women caused their fair share of harm. Mama Cecile stole people's bodies, Miss Jeanette lied to people for money, and Miss Eloise maimed and tortured innocent animals. And that is the most sinister thing about this kind of magic. People prosper based on someone else's demise, and thus the lines between good and bad, right and wrong become blurred. So much so that the healer begins to justify their twisted actions and the means in which they use to attain them. Now there are people out there who will argue that that's simply how the world works. There are simply predators and there's prey and it is a dog eat dog world out there. But things weren't always this way. Now we are no longer in tune with nature, our human nature. Besides, have you ever wondered how and why our ancestors were able to survive hundreds of years of slavery? Have you ever wondered how these hoodoo workers could do phenomenal things so our ancestors could survive and heal? Where did all that power go? We have to understand that the further we get away from our nature, the further we get away from the innate power that our ancestors had and that the indigenous gods that our ancestors worshipped had as well. And that's really what the movie Spell is about. It's about a man fighting against evil and oppression but he's fighting against all these things inside of himself. You see, Marcus clawed his way out of a dirty self and away from his abusive father because he believed that hoodoo as a whole was evil. However, it was Miss Eloise who helps him understand that the kind of hoodoo that she and his father was practicing was dirty. It was evil. It was a mutation of magic. In the end, Marcus learns that he could use magic and, yes, hoodoo spells to save himself and even his family. In truth, Marcus always had this power within him, and I think it was this power that allowed him to be so successful in life. Hoodoo was in his blood, but he betrayed his very own nature when he stopped believing in himself and he stopped believing in the magic. And in the end, he was able to reconnect with this nature. And the belief was sparked yet again. And then Marcus goes from this non-believer to become so powerful that he even defeats Miss Eloise. He's able to destroy her and her community of minions. So what is the moral behind this story? You have a choice. You don't have to use dirty, dark, mutated magic. It's not the only thing that's available to you. There is this powerful magic system that our ancestors used for thousands upon thousands of years. And this was the system that they used to help us survive slavery. And that is the kind of magic that we should be using and tapping into. So now you may be asking yourself, how do you get started? How do you tap into this kind of energy? 
Well, you have to start tapping into your ancestral line. Your ancestral line is going to be your first line of defense. And you can do this by simply creating an altar. Once you do this, you can start to make sacrifices and offerings to your loved ones who have passed away. Now, you're going to do this on a regular basis, and you're going to start to see a significant change within yourself. And you're going to be able to think about things, and they're going to manifest. You're going to begin to have a grave understanding of these magical practices. So anyway, guys, that's the video. I would love for you to like, share, subscribe, comment. What do you think about Hoodoo in the South? What do you think about the movie Spell, The Skeleton Key, or True Blood? Love comments. And also, if you're looking for a good read, I have my books on Audible. If you click on the link in the description area, you can get the first two books for free. So make sure that you support this channel by supporting my art form. So this is Yessie Blue signing off. Until next time, guys, peace out.